All right, you beautiful humans. Is this 27 inch 4K IPS display from Innocent a great pairing with the M1 Max MacBook Pro? I often get asked about external display options for the M1 lineup of Macs, and after using this display in my creative workflow and for the price, we may have found an option in that budget range that might fit your needs. And yes, everyone's budget is different, I understand, but we are checking quite a few boxes here in this price category. And I do wanna spend the majority of our time together talking about the creative aspects when it comes to this use case, because as far as gaming is concerned, yes, you can definitely have a great experience and it does have free sync support. But for those that are looking for higher refresh rates above 60 Hertz, then I would steer you in the direction of a gaming centric display and I also wanna say here that in my experience and in my opinion, it is really hard to find the perfect display for all workflows, gaming and entertainment and 4K to boot with all of this happening within that smaller budget. So first, I would ask yourself, what is your primary use case? Followed by uh, the second most important question is, which of course is your budget? And I hadn't personally heard of Innocen before this as a brand, but I am always rooting for the underdog here. And based on my experience, I am pleasantly surprised by this 3840 by 2160 IPS LED backlit display with an anti-glare coating that is on it and also has a USB type C connectivity for that one cable for throughput. And of course that capability of charging at 65 watts. And the type C cable does come in the box along with the display. And you also get a USB-A to, to type B and a display port cable as well. And the IO also allows this to become a hub when using USB-C. And so, especially if you need USB type A, but these are 3.0. So if you're using something like, let's say an external drive, do expect that slower communication protocol, which isn't obvious at 3.0 speeds. Now, I've also tested these with USB Type-C to DisplayPort cable, as well as Type-C to HDMI and HDMI to HDMI. And I've linked those cables down below, but I always encourage you to look at the specs on the cables that you have or may have to purchase because it can make a difference if they if they really can't handle that signal and that throughput to give you the best possible experience. And of course, speaking of my experience, let me emphasize here that with these Liquid Retina XDR displays on these M1 Pro and M1 Max machines, it really is hard to even match that, that level of experience at a price that is often out of reach for many, especially if color accuracy is a primary consideration. And one big issue that I do want to address here that many of you may have had with the M1 lineup is that waking this monitor from sleep has not been an issue with my testing on the M1 Max MacBook Pro and of course the M1 Mac Mini. And I haven't had any random wake occurrences and even leaving it overnight, having external SSD still plugged in, other accessories, and it hasn't really been an issue. It's, you know, Monterey has had a few annoying bugs here. And, and so I just wanted to point these issues toward the operating system. But like I said, I haven't experienced any hangups on, on this particular display. And let's of course talk about the display when it comes to text, because I know many of you are using these machines with development and coding tasks, and even for those that are just really typing notes. And I also haven't observed any issues with the text being blurry or pixelated, which I know that this is an obvious deal breaker for many of you that are trying to avoid the, those headaches that will ensue when trying to write code, or again, just typing up notes. And this isn't typically the fault of the display, but thanks to the, to the removal of the anti-aliasing, from the operating system and sometimes that uneven scaling that occurs. So thanks a lot, Mac OS. So just as a disclaimer here, this is why many of us review these specific for Mac setups because there are so many variables that sometimes just don't allow these to play well. And so the comment section might get populated with questions about specific monitors. And this is where I really do rely on all of you in the community to help each other out. And I will be taking advantage of the vase amount option, but for now, I think the stand is just fine out of the box and could certainly serve your needs. But for those that may need a, a setup for a smaller desk, I completely understand that. And this could also be a consideration for an adjustable arm to get that viewing angle further back. But again, this isn't a ding on the supplied stand at all. It is adjustable up and down with the ability to tilt. And of course, if you need to use this display in a vertical fashion, it's really awesome. This does have you covered here for your, for like if you're editing files or maybe even you wanna have like a Discord server off to the side or whatever. 
And of course, if one display or computer isn't enough, I was able to add in the M1 MacBook Air with a picture-in-picture -picture option so that I can keep my eye on that crypto that seems to be quite active these days. But let's actually talk about the color, which I'm not really sure that these shots do it full justice for you here, but I was hanging out in just the standard profile. And there are several options that you'll have in the on-screen display options, but I am more focused on color accuracy. And so here is my experience. I have always preferred just connecting via the USB-C cable first, because I feel as if this gives me the best output and overall results with a USB-C to display port option as a very close second. However, as I've said previously, although you can connect it via HDMI from these MacBook Pros, I do find that there is a color shift and overall variance requiring some tweaks to get those colors more in line with the built-in display, as well as just an overall look that I'm going for. But when comparing the 4K display with my ultra wide that is 3440 by 1440, I tried really hard to capture the subtle differences, but let's just say they are both stunning. And I tried to tune them very similarly and this 400 nits of peak brightness provides a bit depth of 10 bits with over a billion colors, but this is achieved with that frame rate control that manipulates those pixels. And so if you need a true 10 bit panel for color grading, then you're most likely in a different price bracket altogether. And I really can't fault any monitor in this price range for that. But as you'll see, these panels are also different where if you are looking at them straight on, then it might almost seem as if the ultra wide has better color accuracy, although you'll, you'll also have to take my word for it that they are both very competitive here. And when you move over to the side about 45 degrees or so, this is where you can see some of the advantage of an IPS panel versus an MVA panel. And I also connected this through a hub that I'm, that I'm testing right now, and it's still a production model, but I did have the Innocen display connected via DisplayPort and then the ultra wide via HDMI. Now it does have eye care, which is something that we're starting to see with a lot of these displays, especially from a creative standpoint. But do keep in mind that when you're ready to, to grade your footage, do make sure that you toggle that option off. Now I do get asked about speakers and yes, they are there. And as I said on Twitter, it never seems fair to even compare the built-in display speakers to the ones in the MacBook Pro. And so if you need some audio in a pinch, you've got it. And if I were looking for a con, this is likely one of the few that I can find. But I just have to reiterate here, folks, that this is the display. We're focused on that, at least I am. And especially at this price point, you've got speakers. And running an additional test, if you can see in, in this light leak test, which these types of panels are, you'll typically see this. And so in a dark room, and depending on what aspect ratio the content is that you're, you're viewing, you can see it in the bottom left corner of this particular display. However, with content that completely fills the screen, then this is something that you'll likely not even realize. And again, something I've seen with other panels in this particular category. But I will continue to review this particular setup and implement it into my workflow, as well as doing some additional assessments and color calibration. Although it does come factory calibrated or calibrated from the factory, you will get a report on that. But once I get my Spider X Pro back that's out on loan right now, I will dive deeper into this, but stay tuned for that as far as more content around this display. And if you do need to make a buying decision right now, I am excited for what Innocent has done here. And I can confidently recommend this in your creative workflow specifically in this particular price range, especially the fact that it has that USB-C connectivity that many of us are looking for, especially with these MacBook Pros. But let's hang out in the comments section Keep rocking those faces. I do look forward to seeing all of you right back here on the next one. Still figuring things out here in the studio. Got the mic in the shot. The last one, I didn't have it in the shot. The boom, it's, I'm still full studio reveal, hopefully coming soon, soon, soon. <laughs>